Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here at Leechburg Lights. Thanks for taking the time to stop and check out today's video on X Lights. And today's video, what I want to do is uh, a video about building some submodels. Now I happen to be doing some work right now and uh, I wanted to build some submodels for these snowflakes here. And in order to do that, I figured, well, I figured it out. Why don't I share how I do it? And uh, maybe some of you will begin using some sub models for yourself in your own display. So uh, before we get started, I want to remind you to always click on the help button and go to the donate page for the X Lights uh, donation link that's here at PayPal. Make a donation for some of the most wonderful software that you'll ever use to sequence your pixels, RGB, and uh, standard AC channel controllers. So let's get back into X Lights. And what I've already done is I've selected one model. And uh, you can see here, before we really get into making the submodel, what I want to do is I want to click on the model data. Now, I've already spent the time and built this model uh, by hand uh, in X Lights. I didn't use any other program to do this. Uh, you can you can actually uh, let's see let's get out of here you can actually add a background image whenever you're creating one of these custom models and um, I I have this uh, I have a background image that's saved in there and um, whenever you put that background image in you can open it up you set up your width and your height for the uh, size of the model that you're going to be doing and uh, let's see if I can make this a little darker maybe you can see it this was a a representation of a snowflake similar to what Matt Johnson had uh, on his site and I just kind of uh, took a screen capture it wasn't the exact node count I needed and I had to do my own modifications so um, whenever uh, I make this as light as possible you can still have the background open a little bit um, I had to add in extra places where the nodes weren't located on his snowflake. So um, this is for uh, a, a client who is doing some extra uh, sequencing work. Let me fix that. That needs to be out of there. Delete. Okay, so I put my nodes in. I built my model, and everything in the layout uh, is is as good as it's going to be for now. Um, we have this wonderful thing called a wiring diet, wiring view. So what this does is this creates a reversed view image. So if you're looking at the back of your prop, this is what the wiring view looks like from the back backside. Um, I, whenever I do things, I do things looking from the front and I started over here. And if you look at the model, this is flipped over reversed. But what's nice about this, um, this view here is you can right click and you can export. And when you export, you get this PNG file. And I've already made one up right here. And if I go in and let's open that up so you can see it, um, you can actually change the settings. Let me, let me before I do this, uh, you can right click here. You can make this lighter or darker. You can use a smaller font. You can uh, use a larger font. Um, so there's some options here and the point of exporting this this image is so that I could physically print this up and once it was printed let's see here we go snowflake layout once it's printed I now or once it's once it's saved as an image I can go ahead and take this over to my printer and I can print this out so while I'm not going to be using the on-screen help uh, and you'll see that in a minute I have this physically in my hand and I'll be using that as a point of reference so that it will speed me up in my uh, uh, ability to uh, build my model. So with that being said, all the all the uh, all of the uh, setup parameters kind of in place and so you know where I get all of my uh, all of my data from. I built that snowflake, it's done, I've got everything set up in here. Uh, what I want to do next is I want to start building my submodel. So we'll just come down here and we'll click on the submodel range. Now I've already built, let me, uh, let me make this bigger because this will be helpful for all of you if you haven't really messed with this screen very much like I hadn't up until last night. So uh, I, I went ahead and I've already created a, uh, a, a group of submodels that are called legs. And um, if I click on the ranges here, watch the... Uh, actual image over here. So if I click on it, it's going to highlight that set of node ranges over there. If I click on the next one, here's number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. This allows me to set effects on individual 
um, submodels within a group. So I have a group of submodels called legs, and this is the entire leg of the uh, snowflake. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to add another set of um, submodels, and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to call these the arms. I want a submodel with just these little arms here, these uh, sets of six pixels on or uh, twelve pixels on each leg. So I'm going to call it arms, and I'm going to click OK. Now from here we've got the arms drop down, arms or legs. I can switch from one or the other, and now I'm going to select the first line or the first set of uh, pixels in my submodel. Now, um, I have a habit of starting here at the bottom. I don't know why, but that's just where I started, uh, where, where the prop was started. And I know node range number four through nine, which is here, four through nine. And all you have to do is hover, oops, I'm sorry, four through nine, four through nine. So it goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type four through nine, four dash nine. And as soon as I do that, click outside of it, notice that it's highlighted and it highlights those pixels. And it tells us, okay, these are the nodes within this range. So, um, so I'm going to add in these ones here as well. I can see if I point, this is node 184 through 189. So I want to add that in too. 184 through 189. Okay, now we're going to add a row. And if, I, if you click outside and then click back inside, you'll see that only those nodes for those, those arms, as I call them, are uh, listed there. And nothing else is selected in the entire model. So now, without looking at these, the little hover overs, that's 24 through 29, I'm just going to refer to my sheet that's off screen to help me go do this a little bit faster. Make sure you're putting a comma in between uh, or a space. I'm not sure if you need the comma, but I always put a comma in. It's no big deal. Uh, but you, I, like I said, this works for me, so I'm uh, pretty sure that you should put a comma in. So there's 36 through 41. We're going to add another row. do it for all of the submodels. So if I click on them, I'm just going to click on them to verify that I've got all my node ranges in the correct areas via the display here. So it looks like I did. It looks like I got all those together. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click OK. And now this, notice that this change here, there's a change made. So I'm going to click Save here. We go back in and we can open it up and we should have two drop down, a drop down with two uh, um, different models uh, or, or two different sub models, the legs and the arms. Uh, the third one I want to make what is going to be the inner circle. This is just one sub model period. We really don't need to um, we really don't need to have like this segment here, segment here, segment here. I'm not, that's not what I'm interested in. I just want the whole inner circle because I can still overlay the effects on it and it will still look pretty cool. So. Uh, that should do it. So that should be all of our inner circle there. We didn't, looks like we didn't miss any. So we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll save it, and let's go back in and make sure that uh, we have the three models saved here. We have the legs, we have the arms, and then we have the inner circle. And um, I guess I could break this down into segments, but I believe the effects in X-Lights will, um, will take care of uh, uh, doing the heavy lifting, so to speak. There is... Um, there is another uh, model that I pro possibly could build, and um, and that I suppose would be like just these only the skinny legs right here in the middle, 
and that way it could be a spinner. So we could build that one as well if you want to sit through that um, spinner. So we'll start creating the spinner. Let's start over and go ahead and begin with uh, the spinner here, uh, just the spinner legs. So we're going to go one through three, comma, That should do it for all of the legs. So let's go ahead and click OK this time and not lose the data that we just saved into it. Let's go back in and check it out. And uh, let's see if our spinner is set up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that should do it. Now let's go ahead and get into the sequencer tab here and have a look at how the submodel will work. Um, I was playing with that on the star earlier, and uh, so we're looking for the snowflakes, and they're under my snowflake group here. We'll go into snowflake number one. Now this is how, this is how they're set up, this, the legs, the arms, the inner circle, and the spinner. So, um, and then the strand level. So this is the spinner level, this, the inner circle, the arms, and the legs. Let's go ahead and try throwing some effects on here and just seeing what we can do with, uh, with the effects that x lights will generate for us. And just doing simple stuff. So uh, first of all, if none of you have ever used a snowflake before, using the explosion effect, I call it the explosion effect, this is the uh, shockwave. If you look here, it says shockwave. I use E for explosion for shortcut. And to make the adjustment here, make this a little bigger. And we can make this thickness just a little bit bigger too. We can do like a color on there. So that's a way to go from the inside of your circle to the outside of your circle really, really easy. Um, uh, this is this is a, a very simple go-to effect uh, whenever it comes to doing snowflakes or spinners. You could throw that on the same thing here on the spinner itself, and it will only generate the effect over top of just the legs uh, or the the actual uh, arms. Uh, here's the circle. Here is just the little the little nubbins on the outside, the arms of it, and then just on all the legs. So it's kind of the same thing. It actually looks like it reverses. Let me try reversing it the other way. Not doing. There we go. So the, this is shockwave is definitely a good effect to use, um, but let's just use something else like a single strand effect. And it gives you something a little bit different. Let's make it a little thicker chase size, number of chases, chase size. And we can change the way that it's previewed by going over this, that's the single line from start of the line to the finish of the line. You can change the numbers. Um, let's put red on here. Give it some color. Red. There we go. Uh, we can make two different chases on here. We can make the chase size a little bit smaller. So that, that gives you this spinning motion, I guess. Uh, the, the where you're going to make a lot of your changes and make them easy is always going to be over here in the layer setting box under the buffer tab changing from default to single line so that's what it does whenever it's on the legs what if it's on just the spinner so if it's on the spinner you just get the legs to go uh, and no none of the uh, none of the side arms if you put it on the arms let's see we can do this and you can make the size a little bit thicker. Let's do that. And um, yeah, so it, it's a pretty interesting way to, to create effects and so forth. Um, I, I, it's gonna be really easy to add neat stuff into your display whenever you begin 
adding these. And like I said, I really haven't played with anything dealing with this, uh, uh, the sub buffer. So um, guys, get out there. Why don't you do some playing uh, uh, with the sub buffer or the with the sub buffer that's in the layout tab under sub models? Go in, go in and begin building some uh, custom uh, ranges for your models that you built. And uh, I mean, this isn't just uh, for a custom model. I mean, for goodness sakes, this is uh, available to absolutely every single model that there is. You can come to there's the mega tree. We can click on that, and you can begin building. Uh, some models. There's also this auto generate function here. We can generate. Uh, uh, we'll give it a sub model. We'll name it. Um, we'll name it uh, quarters. I don't know. And we'll do. It says vertical slices. Let's do. Uh, there's different uh, uh, changes here. Let's do horizontal slices. Let's say that there's four, four slices. So here's slice number one. Uh, in the sub buffer, here's the node ranges. Um, we can click OK for that one and save it. Let's go back and look at that. And what that will do is here's quarters one, quarters two, quarters three, quarters four, and um, you click OK. Let's go in. This is the uh, this is the mega tree, the main the main mega tree. Let's see. Uh, Pixel tree line. It's the number. It's the number six tree here. Let's go somewhere where there isn't any sequencing. Right here. Let's um, let's just do the. Uh, let's double click. Here's our quarters, and we can do um, a morph. Well, that's interesting. How about I take the caps lock off morph. So it's doing a, a morph straight up. So that very quickly allows me to segment out the mega tree, the pixels in the mega tree into different segments uh, to allow for fast sequencing uh, or ease of sequencing, I guess you could say. So there's a lot of options. Okay, I'm done rambling, guys. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Remember to go and click help and make your donation if you are using using the software. There's a lot of uh, developers and uh, and uh, creators that do a lot of work for us. So thank you very much, guys. Take care. We'll talk to you again soon.